Hello and welcome to this course with me, Rory, from Hyper Production. And today I'm here with Sonic Academy giving you a complete course on IK Multimedia's T Rex 5. So, what I want to do is give a bit of a real life sort of use of these plugins. And I'm going to explain a bit about the new plugins that are there as well. And then we're going to go in and try and have a listen to a few as well. So, the four new ones that they've got is the Master Match. The Dyna MU, which is like a dual processing compressor limiter type thing. Uh, the Master Match is what we'll talk about later on in this course, but it's a great bit of kit. Then we have the Equal or Equal or however you want to pronounce it, which is a great EQ plugin from RK Multimedia. And then they've added a superb sort of all-in-one mastering process one, which is called the TR51. So this has kind of got all your fundamental finishing parameters that you want to edit when you've got maybe sort of a DIY master that you want to do. So you're playing at the club this weekend you want to apply something to the whole output then that is the plugin for you so what i want to explain is about how we're going to utilize these within the real world so we have a drum bus here which is just combined of all our drum tracks here which are signaled in orange and then we're going to apply the dyna mu to it and then we're just going to try and get that hitting harder in the mix but first what i'll do is show you the little track <laughs> Okay, so there it is in all its liquid DMB glory. So what I want to do is try and get the drums hitting a little bit harder, go through the mix a bit more, but not necessarily add loads of volume. So how do we do that? Compression. That's how we do that. So we're going to open up the Dyna MU. So we're going to go to our audio plugins, IK Multimedia, and then go to the Dyna MU. Now it comes with quite a few handy presets in there as well. So you do have your see, drum smash, which is going to make it seem a lot fatter and a lot more in your face, which is good. So let's have a quick listen to that preset there. As you can see, it's adding a lot of volume there, but the dynamics are slightly controlled. So we don't necessarily want it to be adding loads of volume. We want it to be actually processing the dynamics and reining in a few of those peaks, because as you can see down there, we are now clipping into the red. So what I'm going to do is actually bring down the output, and then I'm going to keep bypassing the actual plugin to try and match the volume of where we're at. Okay, so we're about there. So we kind of just want to be matching the actual volume that's going in as what we've got coming out. So then we can definitely hear that kick drum's got a lot more punchier. It's got a bit more of a clicky sound to it. So then that's going to be cutting through the mix a little bit better. So we've got our drum bus done. So that's going to be cutting through the mix quite nicely. If you mix from the drums bass going upwards, that's going to give you a real nice starting point to creating a nice balanced mix. So what we're also going to do is again, add the Dyna MU on there as well. We might have to use the the EQ to try and low cut the uh, the bottom end a little bit. So we'll see how we get on. So we're going to open up another instance of the Dyna MU. And then what we're going to do is maybe pull down the threshold a little bit. If you're wondering why our, the two knobs are working in conjunction, i.e. the left and the right side, it's because we have this gang button clicked on. So when we do that, they're going to go individual. And we've also got a link there as well, which is basically processing both of the channels as well. So the LR, left and right. MS is mid and side, or mono and stereo, if you want to think of it like that. So then we can also process the mono information and then just leave the stereo field i.e maybe the top end like the hats and stuff uncompressed if you like so we can then tighten up the bottom end so what we're going to do is probably just bring down the threshold to about three to one and then we're going to leave everything else as it is and then what we're going to do is bump up the input and we want to be getting again about minus three db worth of gain reduction because that is a great sweet spot within compression so when we start doing that we're going to probably bump down or maybe put up the output depending on the processing that's happening and then we need to match what we've got going in then coming out because we want to just rein in the dynamics and not just add volume, so here we go. Okay. 
Okay, so in this section here, when it sort of drops down a note, it's definitely sounding a lot more controlled and not having those sort of resonant peaks that you normally get when basses change notes. So that is great. And that's exactly what we're looking for. So let's have a listen to that in context with the rest of the track. And then we see if we can apply any more to it. Yeah, so definitely in that second section when it's bypassed, it definitely loses that sort of power. So what we want to do now is maybe go on this pluck synth and we want to try and maybe bring out the presence a little bit more. So now what we want to use is the Equal plugin. So we're going to go to audio units, we're going to go to IK Multimedia, and then we're going to go down to the Equal. And then the normal boosting presence range is between two and two and a half K. So we're going to give a, a little boost like that, but of course we're going to listen to it. Okay, great. So we've definitely got that punching out in the mix a little bit more. And now let's listen to it in context. Okay, great. Now, in terms of reining the dynamics of that track, I don't think it necessarily needs it because it's got an element of sidechain to it as well as an LFO. So you can hear it when it's sort of the filter closes. So the dynamic range is not necessarily going to help it by being reined in because it's not really that apparent throughout the whole track. Whereas the bass, we needed it to be steady, we needed it to be stable, and we needed to hear it throughout the duration of this track. So that is another great little plugin as well. And then let's say we've got all our track done. So what I'm going to do is then open up our mixer window. I'm going to bust all of this to a sort of a master out if you like or actually we'll just do it on the stereo that might be easier and then what we're going to do is apply the IK Multimedia 1 so let's open that up there and then I'm going to really show you like how powerful this plugin is so I'm going to close that down and then I'm going to play it through I'm going to go through a preset so let's maybe go on to let's go on the loudness button for the sake of loudness war mastering and then I'll just explain a little bit about what each of the features are in here but I will be covering this in future videos on this course so here we go now don't be fooled just because it's louder doesn't necessarily mean it's always better but this is an exceptional exception <laughs> if that's the term so this is definitely evening out the dynamics it's definitely making everything sound a lot more solid it's bringing out some of those nice little nuances within the track so the points that go a bit quieter so this pluck synth it's definitely bringing that out so I'll just quickly go over the parameters that are involved within this plugin so you've got focus which is more like your sort of presence and try and like hone in on maybe the sort of those upper mid frequencies we've got air which is adding that bit of shimmer to the end so that's kind of like your maybe 12 kilohertz upwards range of hearing and we've got a push which is basically pushing it into the limiter but that's where you get your sort of squash sound so you need to be a little bit careful with that one and then the volume is basically just bumping up the overall volume but that's when you probably get real harsh clipping so your push is the squash volume do it too much you'll start clipping body so that's going to be sort of your lower mids so that's going to give you a bit more of a, a bassy rumble width so that's going to really accentuate the stuff that you've got panned left and right or whether there's a difference within your particular track that you've got going on so like i mentioned earlier maybe hi-hats are sort of panned left and right that's going to really bring them out transients that's going to really sort of tighten up the sort of transients to make everything seem or sound a bit more punchier which is what it's definitely doing I'll, I'll put that up a little bit more extreme in a minute so you can actually hear what it's doing analog now what this does is basically add sort of a low bed of noise and this kind of replicates what's going on in vintage equipment it will always have that sort of low end hum which is great bass punch pretty self-explanatory is going to really bring out the low end and that as well so i want to just demonstrate quickly these transient and the push function especially because the rest of them are quite self-explanatory so we're just going to reset all this okay great so now what i want to do is do the push so i'm going to play the track through i'm going to really push it up and you'll see exactly what i mean about pushing it a bit too much <laughs> So just by doing that, it's definitely lost all its kind of dynamic range. It's definitely not got any sort of push and feel to it at all. And then especially when we bump up the volume, it's just going to end up distorting and sounding a bit horrible. <laughs> 
So definitely even out those two. You need both of them to sort of work together if you want to get that sort of real loud finish master, if you like. So just be a bit careful with that one. And then transients, we're going to push up. So I'm going to put this one to about three and you hear these transients really, really pop. Here we go. <laughs> definitely hear that kick drum just really popping out the mix and really being in your face and we're not necessarily adding too much volume when it's doing that as well in terms of how it would sound if you're just simply turning up the kick which is exactly what we're after within these single modules it's really handy for setting up sort of mic input so with your channel strip settings you can then replicate going in hot into a channel on a desk pretty much and the way we do that is obviously by setting up a input so say we're gonna have input one but I can't do that because I'm on the mic and then what we can end up doing is is going from IK Multimedia going into perhaps a 76 compressor. So this is the new version of the Black 76 from previous versions in the T-Rex family. This is emulating a Yuri 1176 and it's a pretty world renowned and world famous compression slash limiter and it's used heavily on a lot of vocals and you definitely would have heard this plugin before. Then what we can go into is perhaps maybe a British Channel desk EQ. So let's go into British Channel and we're going to go on stereo and then what we can do is then you can either play around the presets, you can go to a vocal, and then you can sort of tweak the vocal as you're going in. And then we need to go on a DS, especially if you're doing vocals for mics and things like that. So then we're going to go to IK Multimedia, go up to the DS, into stereo, and then just set your DS as you wish. And then what we can do, which is great about most DAWs, which is kind of what's been the revolution of uh, coming out of, of hardware, is that we can save those channel strip settings. So save channel strip setting as, and then we can put mic pre and then what we'll have down there is obviously our mic pre there as well so that is basically how useful these single modules can be they're a great bunch of modules in there and they sound amazing too which i hope you can appreciate the examples that i've shown you in this video so i hope you carry on learning more about this amazing mixing and mastering suite from t-rax 5 i've been rory from hyper production and you've been watching sonic academy so stay tuned Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.